let us now examine some other distribution functions besides the normal distribution. As I explained, the normal distribution has unique importance in measurement science, but there are a few others that are also important. And we will now look at the rectangular and triangular distribution. And we will do that on the example of a pipette again. If we look at this pipette, the uncertainty of calibration of this pipette is 0.03 milliliters. And if we look at it, we see that there's a sign of plus minus in front of this 0.03. And there's no information given anywhere here about the status of this uncertainty about the distribution function or about the coverage factor. Let us see how we should handle this kind of information that comes in a limited way, meaning there's a lack of concrete information about the uncertainty. The usual way that people handle this kind of situation is that some distribution function is assumed or is postulated. And rectangular and triangular distributions are the most frequent ones to be used in this case. So let us look at the rectangular distribution. We have here the probability. possible values for the measurement. And let it be the calibrated volume of the pipe. And this is here 10 milliliters. And now this uncertainty plus minus 0.03 would be here like follows. And now, if it is rectangular distribution, then this means that the probability of the true calibrated volume being anywhere within this range is equal. Meaning that the area under this curve is unity. The probability of the volume being outside is zero and there's no distinction between any of these values here. Now, if we want to use this uncertainty estimate, this plus minus 0.03 milliliters in an uncertainty calculation. We have to convert it somehow into standard uncertainty. And converting from rectangular distribution to standard uncertainty is very easy and can be done as follows. It is simply divided by square root of 3. So that whenever we have uncertainty expressed as plus minus some value, and we have a reason to assume rectangular distribution, we always can find the standard uncertainty estimate by dividing by square root of 3. Let us now look at the triangular distribution. It's quite similar to the rectangular distribution, but with difference in shape. Again, we have here probability, we have volume. But 
But now, this time, the probability of the true calibrated volume being near 10 is higher than being near 10.03 or 9.97. And the shape of the distribution curves looks as a triangle. I deliberately have drawn it such a way that the areas under these two curves are equal. So in both cases, the probability of being within this range is 100%, and being outside here is zero. But in this case, yes, as I said, the probability of being near 10 is higher than away from it. And how do we convert now? So if we have uncertainty estimate given as plus minus 0 0.03, then the standard uncertainty estimate of this would be divided by square root of 6, which is equal to roughly 0 0.012 milliliters. Now, how do we choose which of these two distributions we assume if we do not have information which one is true? Usually, I would recommend such an approach that you choose the way by which the probability of underestimating uncertainty is lower. If we look now, then the unstandard uncertainty estimate of this calibrated volume will be higher if we assume rectangular distribution than if we assume triangular distribution. Therefore, as a general rule, if you have uncertainty given as plus minus some value and you do not have any information about that uncertainty range, I recommend that you assume rectangular distribution. We now look at these two distribution functions only as assumed or postulated distribution functions. And you may ask that, well, are there any real cases where rectangular distribution, for example, really holds? And indeed, there are. They are not numerous. This distribution does not uh, come up very often, but if we speak about rounding of digital reading, for example, in a digital balance or some other digital meter, then the uncertainty due to rounding is strictly uncertainty according to the rectangular distribution. And then this dividing by square root of 3 is a strict operation, not an assumption as we have now. How does it work with this rounding uncertainty? Let us look at a small example. Suppose we have a reading of some instrument, let's say pH meter, and let's say that reading would be 7.42. So the pH value of some water is 7.42. It's a digital reading, so we have these two decimals, we don't have any others, but obviously actually there are more digits that simply are not seen by us because the analog digital converter does not give them to us. So the true reading can be, for example, 7.418. It can also be 7.424. And it can also be different other values. But if we now look carefully, it's obvious that this reading certainly will be within the range of 7.415. If it were lower than 7.415, we would already see 7.41. If it were higher than this value, we would see 7.43. Therefore, 
In this case, we know it is between these limits and we have absolutely no information, absolutely no preference where it actually is. So indeed, it is fully reasonable to assume in this case uniform or rectangular distribution. This is also interesting from another point of view. If you remember the introductory lecture of this course, I stress that we almost never can have uncertainty in such a way that some value is strictly within the limits. It turns out now that this particular uncertainty source is strictly within these limits. So it cannot be outside. Therefore, the probability outside of this rectangle indeed is zero. True, this does not hold always. So, if this distribution function is just a postulated distribution function without strict physical background behind it, then it is possible that there's also some tiny small probability somewhere here. But it is assumed to be zero and from practical point of view it does not really matter.